The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans, High Stick NT, and the Manitoba Pulse and Soybean Pro. We uh, were joined here on Real Agriculture by Ken Hellevong of North Dakota State University. And uh, Ken, with, uh, with soybean harvest well underway, done in, in many cases already, the beans are, are in the bin. And uh, in some cases, they came off quite dry this year. There are some steps that growers can consider taking to, uh, to potentially add, add moisture, add some weight back to the beans. Yes, that's right. Uh, we we kind of refer to it as as reconditioning the beans, um, and we're kind of just doing the the opposite of what we would do with natural air drying. That uh, if the beans are exposed to air that is dry, moisture moves from the bean to the air. If it's exposed to air that's at a higher humidity than the beans. Then the moisture goes from the air to the soybeans, and so the the goal is to try to take those beans that might be oh you know nine percent moisture and, and increase that moisture content back closer to what our our typical market standard somewhere in the neighborhood of thirteen percent moisture and just like we would do with natural air drying, it, it's a relatively slow process. Uh, we need a, a bin that's set up to move lots of airflow, and we're probably looking at you know a month of of fan time in order to to dry drain. The same thing would be true with with rewetting the beans that. Uh, we would need to have lots of airflow, and, it, and it's going to be a process that will, will take some time. The goal, of course, is to be uh, able to market the beans at, at the 13% moisture, where we're going to have more pounds in that uh, bin that we're able to market. And, and when you look at you know, the typical drying costs or rewetting costs for running the fan versus the change in the in the value of of the grain that's in that bin. Uh typically we're we're seeing a significant benefit for being able to recondition those soybeans. There are a couple of concerns though and, and the biggest one is that just like when we're drying the beans, uh, there's a, a shrinkage that takes place, and the beans will settle in the bin. When we're the moisture content increases in the soybeans, there's an expansion that takes place, but unfortunately, the beans don't uh, increase in in depth. Uh, so that force then gets transferred to the bin wall. And in some cases, uh, we can stress the bin wall to the point where we're damaging the, the grain bin. We can uh, cause problems at the bolted joints, uh, in a worst case scenario, maybe even actually uh, cause that to, to rip out and have a, a rupture of the bin. So there's a number of things that people have tried over the, the years that have worked. Unfortunately, we don't have, you know, documented research that we can rely on, but, uh, you know, some have found that by periodically unloading a uh, load or two of beans uh, as that uh, reconditioning is taking place, that we don't have uh, been structural problems. Uh, others have gone to pulling the air down, uh, so you're re-wetting the beans at the top of the bin and then uh, unloading those beans um, as the, the in moisture content is, is reconditioned. So there, there are some things that, that are options, but a person needs to uh, 
really approach it, I guess, with with some care and close monitoring to make sure that that we're not uh, creating a uh, damaged bin as part of that reconditioning process. Mm-hmm. What a, what about spoilage, or or where do you want humidity to be when when you have the fans running? Typically, we're we're looking at at a target relative humidity of about 70 percent uh, is, is the goal. Uh, now, there's going to be you know fluctuations that will occur during the daytime. Uh, it might be warmer and drier during the daytime, uh, cooler and higher humidities at night. But uh, what we're looking for is an average, roughly in that 70% relative humidity uh, range. And that will then provide us with soybeans that are about 13% moisture. What we don't want to do, what can cause us trouble is, you know, if it's foggy or rainy and we decide that, well, let's run the fans now and because and, there's very humid air outside, uh, that air will go into the bin and this reconditioning takes place in a front uh, that gradually moves through the bin just like a, a drying zone would. And we can end up with a, a layer of, of wet beans that would be uh, at a high enough moisture content where spoilage could become an issue. So we either need to manually be monitoring relative humidities and, and operating the system uh, to achieve that 70% target, or we need to uh, you know, either use humidistats or... Uh, some type of fan controller that is measuring relative humidities and turning the fan on and off based on outside conditions. And so there's some economic benefit for doing it, uh, but there are certainly some challenges and some management that is required uh, to be successful at it. Would you recommend that uh, that a farmer try this now or should they have started this earlier how much how much time do you need before winter for uh, for this to work well it, it's a, it's a lot like natural air drying uh it is uh dependent both on outdoor air temperature and the relative humidity so the cooler the outside temperatures the longer the process is going to take so um uh, you know, it depends a little bit of what Mother, Mother Nature uh, will will give us in the, in the next few weeks. But, uh, you know, there could be a benefit to to doing it yet for, for a little bit of time. Or we can uh, cool, cool the beans down, store them over winter, and then uh, do that same reconditioning process in the spring once temperatures are I'm moderating and again you know the closer we get to to freezing the less efficient this process is going to be so staying with warmer temperatures will uh, make the the process much more efficient all right well thanks for your time ken you're very welcome 